In this special video, we will show you 8 types of people we should not help. You will be surprised by the last one, but before we start, we want you to pay close attention to this story as it will be very important for you to understand the great lesson of this video. Once upon a time, there was a farmer named Joe who lived in a small village. Joe was known for his kindness and was always willing to help others. One day, he found a snake trapped in a snare in his field. Although it was dangerous, Joe felt compassion for the snake and decided to set it free. Joe took care of the snake, feeding it and giving it a safe place to recover. However, as soon as the snake felt better, it bit Joe and slithered away. Joe, hurt and surprised, realized that the snake's nature was to bite no matter how much help it received. This story teaches us that some people, like the snake, do not change their nature. Sometimes in our desire to help, we can ignore the signs and end up getting hurt. It is crucial to know who we help and understand that not everyone will value or appreciate our efforts. Imagine your energy is like a battery. Some people recharge it, while others drain it faster than a phone with 100 apps open. Sound familiar? Well, let's explore these energy vampires and why it is crucial to recognize them. Before diving into the first type of person, if you find value in these videos, please subscribe and click the bell to stay updated. Now, let's get started together. Number 1. The Ingrates Have you ever met someone who seems to have a black hole instead of a heart? Those people who, no matter how much you give them, always want more and are never satisfied. Imagine you are at a restaurant enjoying a delicious dinner with friends. Suddenly, you hear someone loudly complaining about the food, the service, even the color of the napkins. Yes, you've guessed it, it's the professional ingrate in action. But why do some people seem perpetually dissatisfied? Psychology has some interesting answers. According to a study by the University of California, people with low self-esteem tend to be less grateful. It's like they have a filter that only lets the negative pass through, blocking all the good that life offers them. Now we're not saying you should cut ties with everyone who forgets to say thank you, but it's important to recognize when someone is constantly abusing your kindness. As the famous businessman Richard Branson once said, a treat your employees as you want them to treat your best customers. We could extend this advice to all our relationships. Think of gratitude as a plant. It needs to be watered and cared for to grow. If you are constantly giving water, your time, energy, resources, to a plant that never blooms, perhaps it's time to ask yourself if you're cultivating in the wrong garden. But be careful not to confuse ingratitude with constructive honesty. Your friend who tells you that you have spinach in your teeth before an important date isn't an ingrate, they're a hero without a cape. The difference lies in the intention and the pattern of behavior. A fascinating study published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology revealed that people are not only happier but also have stronger and more enduring relationships. It's as if gratitude is the invisible glue that holds our social connections together. Now then, what do we do with these people? The answer is not simple, but we can take some lessons from positive psychology. Martin Seligman, considered the father of this branch of psychology, suggests that cultivating gratitude benefits not only the receiver but also the giver. So instead of getting frustrated with ingrates, we might see them as an opportunity to strengthen our own ability to appreciate the good in life. It's like going to the gym, but for our gratitude muscle. However, let's not confuse being grateful with being a bottomless pit. Setting healthy boundaries is as important as being generous. As the writer Breen Brown once said, a generosity is not infinite and it isn't true generosity if it comes from resentment. Remember, their lack of gratitude says more about them than it does about you. As the psychologist Carl Rogers once said, the curious paradox is that when I accept myself just as I am, then I can change. So the next time you encounter an ingrate, take a deep breath, 
remember your own worth, and ask yourself, does this person deserve my energy? If the answer is no, it's okay to take a step back. You're not being selfish, you're practicing self-care. And if you decide to continue helping, do it because you genuinely want to, not because you expect recognition. As the philosopher Immanuel Kant said, he act in such a way that you use humanity, both in your person and in the person of any other, always at the same time as an end, never merely as a means. Number 2. The Land of Perpetual Procrastination Unveiling the Chronically Lazy Let's step away from the energy vampires for a moment and delve into another category of folks who might leave you feeling slightly exasperated, the chronically lazy. These are the individuals who seem to have an aversion to effort written into their DNA, treating the couch like a throne and the remote control like a royal scepter. Welcome to the fascinating world of the lazy, the undisputed champions of procrastination, who through their sheer dedication to doing nothing, teach us valuable lessons in productivity, or rather the lack thereof. Imagine a bustling office setting, a crucial project deadline looming on the horizon. Suddenly, a colleague pipes up, a sorry everyone, couldn't finalize the marketing report. Turns out, my goldfish developed a sudden case of writer's block and totally hijacked my creative flow. Yep, that's our dear friend, the professional lazy person, in their natural habitat. Such characters turn the workplace into a comedic stage, where every missed deadline is an elaborate performance worthy of an Oscar. But what fuels this aversion to action? Science, bless its curious mind, offers some interesting insights. Researchers at the University of Calgary propose that laziness might actually be an evolutionary holdover, a built-in energy-saving mode passed down from our caveman ancestors. It's like inheriting a battery saver gene from the good old days when conserving energy meant the difference between outrunning a saber-toothed tiger or becoming its lunch. Unfortunately, in today's world overflowing with deadlines and to-do lists, this strategy can backfire spectacularly, causing more harm than good. The esteemed psychologist William James once quipped, a nothing is so fatiguing as the eternal hanging on of an incomplete task. And oh, how right he was. Procrastination doesn't just affect our productivity, it wreaks havoc on our mental well-being too. A study in the Journal of Psychological Science revealed a strong correlation between chronic procrastination and heightened stress levels, not to mention a general decline in overall health. The constant state of unfinished business can leave one's mind in perpetual chaos, akin to a computer with too many tabs open. However, before we write off our lazy companions entirely, let's not forget the wisdom of the great Albert Einstein, who while possibly looking for an excuse not to style his hair, uttered the profound words, a laziness is the mother of invention. Here's the thing, sometimes, the fervent desire to avoid work can spark a stroke of creative genius, leading to innovative solutions. Take the invention of the remote control, for example. Perhaps the inventor simply couldn't be bothered to get up and change the channel every time. This innate laziness sometimes fuels remarkable ingenuity and technological advancements. So, how do we identify these masters of procrastination? Here are some telltale signs. The king or queen of excuses. These individuals have an excuse repertoire that would make a seasoned politician blush. And the dog ate my homework he is just child's play compared to, yeah, I couldn't finish the presentation because the neighbor's lawnmower drowned out all my inspirational thoughts. Their creativity in evading tasks is boundless and often entertaining, if not frustrating. The master of a tomorrowitis, a, for them, tomorrow is a mythical land where all unfinished tasks get magically transported to. Spoiler alert, tomorrow never comes, and the to-do list keeps growing like a weed patch. It's as if they believe in a magical reset button that will solve all their problems overnight. The leisure multitasker, they possess the uncanny ability to simultaneously binge-watch Netflix, scroll endlessly through social media, and complain about work, all while sprawled on the couch. 
If they channeled that energy into actual productivity, they'd probably have solved world hunger by now. Their skill in juggling multiple leisure activities is unmatched. The shortcut seeker, always on the hunt for the easiest way out. If there were an app that did your breathing for you, they'd be the first ones to download it. Stairs? Nah, they'll wait for the elevator even if it's just one floor up. Their quest for convenience often leads them to neglect the simplest of tasks that require minimal effort. The five-minute fiend, the alarm clock is a mere suggestion in their world. At just five more minutes, they plead, only to wake up an hour later with a crick in their neck and a mountain of missed deadlines. Their constant battle with time is a testament to their desire for just a little more rest, even at the cost of their responsibilities. Now, we're not advocating social exile for everyone who prefers a nap to a gym session. But remember, surrounding ourselves with chronic procrastinators can be a slippery slope. As motivational speaker Jim Rohn wisely said, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So choose your company wisely, because you might end up being the lone productive bee in a hive of sluggish butterflies. This environment can significantly impact your own work ethic and mindset. However, it's essential to approach this issue with empathy and understanding. Chronic laziness might stem from deeper issues such as anxiety, depression, or a lack of direction. Offering support and encouragement can sometimes help these individuals find their motivation. On the other hand, setting clear boundaries and maintaining a strong work ethic can also serve as a positive example for them to follow. In the grand tapestry of human behavior, the chronically lazy play a peculiar but instructive role. Their presence challenges us to reflect on our own productivity habits and the societal pressures to constantly perform. By observing their tendencies, we can learn to strike a balance between relaxation and diligence, ensuring that our efforts are meaningful and sustainable. In conclusion, while dealing with chronically lazy individuals can be frustrating, it also offers an opportunity for growth and self-reflection. Recognizing their patterns and setting healthy boundaries can help maintain a productive environment. At the same time, understanding the root causes of their behavior can foster compassion and potentially inspire change. After all, in the dance of life, every step, whether fast or slow, contributes to the rhythm of our shared existence. Number 3. The Responsibility Rogues. Why a little tough love can be a lifesaver. Let's set sail for another interesting category of folks we might encounter on our life's journey, the irresponsible. These individuals seem to navigate the world on a life raft built of excuses, expertly dodging commitments and leaving a trail of unfulfilled promises in their wake. Imagine a peaceful afternoon on a sailboat, the gentle breeze carrying the scent of salt and adventure. Suddenly, panic ripples across the deck as you discover a gaping hole in the hull, water gushing in with alarming speed. While everyone scrambles to plug the leak and bail out the boat, there's one person calmly sunbathing on the deck muttering, ah, hey, it wasn't me who made the hole. Welcome to the world of the irresponsible in their natural habitat. Helping someone with chronic irresponsibility can be a frustrating exercise in futility. No matter how much support you offer, progress often feels like chasing a mirage. These individuals are masters at shirking duties and possess an almost Olympic-level talent for blaming everyone but themselves. Even when something goes wrong entirely unrelated to your intervention, you might find yourself the scapegoat, taking the fall for their missteps. This constant deflection can be emotionally draining and take a significant toll on your reputation. Imagine this, you're scaling Mount Everest, the air thin, the wind howling, each step a monumental effort. Suddenly, you hear a voice calling for help. You turn to see a fellow climber, lagging behind, strapped to an anchor, an anchor they themselves forgot to clip in properly. This, my friends, is the irresponsible adventurer in their natural habitat, clinging to others for support they never bothered to build for themselves. Sure, we all make mistakes. 
We forget things, we underestimate challenges, and sometimes, life throws us curveballs. But the chronic irresponsible elevate these occasional stumbles into an Olympic sport. They dodge commitments with the grace of a ballerina, leaving a trail of broken promises and frustrated colleagues in their wake. Helping them can feel like scaling that mountain yourself, only to find them clinging to your backpack at the summit, expecting you to carry them down too. The emotional toll of this behavior can be brutal. Imagine pouring your heart and soul into a group project, only to have your irresponsible partner vanish into thin air right before the presentation, leaving you to explain the gaping holes in your carefully crafted slides. Or the friend who constantly borrows money, promising to repay you a next week, but that next week never seems to arrive. It's a recipe for resentment and a constant questioning of your own judgment. Why did I offer to help in the first place? But here's the thing. Beneath the surface of irresponsibility often lies a fear of failure. Perhaps they lack the confidence to take ownership of their actions, or maybe they haven't developed the skills to manage their time and commitments effectively. Our natural instinct might be to swoop in and save the day, but that can actually hinder their growth. Think of it like a metaphorical helicopter parent, constantly hovering, preventing them from learning to navigate the terrain on their own. So, how do we break this cycle? The answer lies in tough love, delivered with a healthy dose of compassion. Instead of becoming their personal rescuer, become their coach. Guide them towards developing self-reflection and self-management skills. Neuroscientist Richard Davidson's research offers a beacon of hope. He highlights the brain's remarkable plasticity, its ability to change and adapt even in adulthood. With the right encouragement, or perhaps a consequence that stings a little, they might learn to take responsibility for their actions. Here's a fun analogy. Think of responsibility like a muscle. Just as exercise strengthens our bodies, encouraging self-reflection strengthens an individual's ability to take ownership of their choices. Perhaps you can help them create a realistic to-do list and hold them accountable for completing it. Or, suggest resources like self-help books or online courses that focus on responsibility and personal growth. Remember, while helping others is a noble act, there's a limit. When your kindness becomes a crutch for someone else's laziness, it's time to draw a line. Instead of getting frustrated, Use this as an opportunity to practice the art of the kind, but firm a no. Sometimes, the greatest act of support is allowing someone to face the consequences of their actions. It might be a wake-up call they desperately need. Think of it like tough love for a friend. You wouldn't let them drive drunk, would you? In the same way, you shouldn't enable their irresponsible behavior. By setting boundaries and refusing to be their personal safety net, you're ultimately encouraging them to take charge of their own lives. It might not be easy, but it can be the most empowering thing you can do for them. So the next time you encounter a responsibility rogue, remember, a little tough love can go a long way. It might just be the push they need to become the self-reliant, dependable person they were always meant to be. Now before we set sail for another category of folks to hopefully avoid, let us know if you're enjoying this voyage of self-discovery. If so, like this video and subscribe to the channel with that notification bell so you don't miss future adventures in navigating the complexities of human behavior. And if you're digging this kind of content, leave a comment below with the number A1. Let's keep learning and growing together, one life lesson at a time. Number 4. The Masters of Mind Games, The Manipulators Remember that group we mentioned who seemed to have a PhD in manipulation? They're a different breed altogether. These are the emotional chameleons, the social butterflies who can morph their personality to fit any situation. Imagine being in a chess game, but instead of controlling your own pieces, your opponent subtly influences yours from across the board. That's the unsettling feeling you get when a manipulator is working their magic. But fear not. Today, 
We'll unveil their tricks and equip you with the tools to defend your emotional fortress. Psychology offers some fascinating insights into why some people seem to have this uncanny ability to manipulate others. Studies suggest people high in narcissism and Machiavellianism are more prone to this behavior. It's like they have an internal compass that always points towards their own benefit, regardless of who gets caught in the crossfire. Why do some people seem to have a master's degree in manipulation? Psychology offers some fascinating insights. A Stanford University study suggests a link between manipulation and personality traits like narcissism and Machiavellianism. These individuals, it seems, operate by an internal compass that always points towards self-interest, leaving a trail of broken trust and bruised emotions in their wake. Now, we're not advocating for paranoia or distrusting everyone you meet. But a healthy dose of skepticism, like a built-in emotional radar, can be a lifesaver. Remember the wise words of psychologist Robert Cialdini, the best defense against manipulation is knowledge. Think of your emotional well-being as a fortress. Manipulators are like emotional pirates, trying to breach your defenses and steal your inner treasure. Without a good security system, they'll be lounging on your emotional sofa, munching on your self-esteem cookies, and holding the remote control to your happiness. So, how do we spot these professional manipulators? Here are some red flags. The personality shapeshifter, they're more adaptable than a chameleon at a costume party. Their personality morphs to fit each person, mirroring what they think the other wants to see. You might find yourself having a deep philosophical conversation with them one minute, and then they're cracking light-hearted jokes with your friend the next. The gaslighting guru, they're experts at twisting reality and making you question your own sanity. Imagine this, you tell them about a situation, and they respond with a furrowed brow, e are you sure that's what happened? Maybe your memory is a bit fuzzy. This is gaslighting, a tactic that chips away at your trust in your own perception. The self-esteem sniper, they disguise subtle jabs as innocent comments, slowly eroding your confidence. Think backhanded compliments like, Ayo, hey, you're wearing that? Well, if you feel good in it. These seemingly harmless remarks chip away at your self-worth, leaving you feeling insecure and unsure of yourself. Manipulators are a unique breed. They possess an uncanny ability to transform goodwill into a weapon exploiting your kindness to serve their own agendas. They're the emotional puppeteers, yanking your heartstrings like marionette controls, leaving you feeling bewildered and used. But fear not, for knowledge is our shield against their cunning. Now let's go to the fifth type of person, the never-ending nitpicker, the chronic critic. Imagine a world where every outfit choice, every life decision, Every perfectly agonized overpresentation is met with a pointed finger and a disapproving frown. That's the life you lead when dealing with a chronic critic. These folks have an uncanny ability to spot flaws, real or imagined, in any situation or person. From the color of your shirt to the way you fold your laundry, no detail escapes their critical gaze. Their conversations are a symphony of negativity, a constant barrage of a should-haves, e and a could-haves that leave you feeling like a deflated balloon. Engaging with a chronic critic feels like walking through an emotional minefield. You tiptoe around, hoping to avoid the inevitable explosion of criticism, but somehow, they always manage to find a landmine to detonate. You pour your heart and soul into a project, and their response is a laundry list of flaws that overshadows any positive aspects. Even the most well-intentioned efforts get dismantled by their sharp words, leaving you feeling discouraged and defeated. Psychology offers some insights into the why of behind the chronic critic. Some experts suggest they use criticism as a way to establish control or power over others. It might be a twisted attempt to feel superior by highlighting flaws they perceive in others. For others, Criticism might be a projection of their own insecurities. 
They feel so inadequate that they need to tear down those around them to feel better about themselves. Imagine them wearing special glasses that only magnify imperfections, making the world a constant source of negativity for them and everyone around them. So, how do you survive in this constant critique-a-thon? The key is to develop a strong sense of self and a healthy dose of skepticism towards their negativity. Don't let their barbs pierce your self-esteem. Remember, their criticism often reflects their own issues more than any shortcomings of yours. Here are some tactics to deflect the negativity and maintain your emotional well-being. Shift the focus. When the criticism starts, try to steer the conversation towards the positive aspects of the situation. If they're critiquing your outfit choice, remind them of a time they complimented a similar style. Focus on finding solutions instead of dwelling on problems. Change the subject. Sometimes, the simplest defense is a good offense. If their negativity is overwhelming, politely excuse yourself and find a more positive conversation. Set boundaries. It's okay to tell someone their criticism is unwelcome. You can say something like, E, I appreciate your feedback, but I'm happy with the way things are. Maintain a positive attitude. Don't let their negativity drag you down. Focus on the things you can control, like your own thoughts and actions. Surround yourself with supportive people who uplift and encourage you. Remember, constructive criticism can be a valuable tool for growth. However, chronic criticism is simply a weapon that destroys self-esteem and undermines confidence. By building your emotional resilience and setting clear boundaries, you can deflect their negativity and cultivate a more positive and constructive environment for yourself and those around you. Number 6. The Allure and Agony of the Narcissist A Guide to Spotting and Surviving Self-Obsessed Personalities Have you ever found yourself in a conversation where every topic somehow circles back to the other person's achievements, aspirations, or experiences? If so, you might have encountered a narcissist, a personality type characterized by an overwhelming focus on themselves and their own needs. These individuals turn self-love into a daily pursuit, often leaving those around them feeling overlooked or overshadowed. Navigating interactions with a narcissist can feel like dancing on a tightrope strung over a sea of fragile egos. Their conversations resemble a performance where they are both the lead actor and the enraptured audience. Whether discussing recent accomplishments or trivial events, they effortlessly weave their narrative into every dialogue, making it challenging to share the spotlight. Identifying a narcissist involves recognizing certain behavioral patterns. They often display an exaggerated sense of self-importance, seeking admiration and validation from others while dismissing or belittling differing viewpoints. Conversations with them tend to revolve around themes of personal achievement or superiority, where even casual discussions can transform into platforms for showcasing their perceived brilliance. Psychologically, narcissism can manifest in various degrees, from healthy self-confidence to pathological self-absorption. Research suggests that approximately 6% of the population exhibits traits associated with narcissistic personality disorder, highlighting its prevalence in social and professional environments. To navigate interactions with narcissistic individuals, setting boundaries becomes crucial. Dr. Craig Malkin, in his book Rethinking Narcissism, he advocates for employing selective validation, a strategy that involves reinforcing positive behavior such as moments of empathy, while disengaging from self-centered monologues. By redirecting conversations toward mutual interests or offering positive reinforcement for considerate behavior, you can encourage healthier interactions without reinforcing their need for constant attention. However, understanding the distinction between healthy confidence and narcissism is essential. While confident individuals celebrate their achievements alongside others, Narcissists view any success beyond their own as a threat to their perceived superiority. This insecurity often drives them to diminish others' accomplishments or monopolize conversations to redirect attention back to themselves. 
Dealing with a narcissist requires patience and resilience. It can serve as a lesson in emotional intelligence, teaching you to recognize manipulative behaviors and protect your own emotional well-being. Rather than engaging in futile attempts to change their behavior, focus on managing your responses and maintaining a sense of self-worth independent of their validation. In practice, this might mean consciously steering conversations away from their self-centered narratives or politely disengaging when conversations become excessively focused on their achievements. By prioritizing healthy boundaries and self-care, you can mitigate the emotional toll of interacting with narcissistic personalities. Ultimately, encountering narcissistic individuals can offer insights into human behavior and interpersonal dynamics. By observing their conduct, you gain valuable knowledge about managing relationships and safeguarding your own emotional health. As you navigate interactions with narcissists, remember that self-awareness and empathy are powerful tools for maintaining personal integrity and resilience in challenging social situations. In conclusion, while navigating relationships with narcissists may present challenges, it also offers opportunities for personal growth and understanding. Armed with knowledge and a strategic approach to communication, you can navigate these interactions with confidence, emerging stronger and more insightful about human behavior and dynamics. Number 7. The Opportunist, a Chameleon in the Garden of Trust Imagine attending a networking event filled with potential connections. Among the crowd, you encounter someone who seems genuinely interested in you, asking insightful questions, laughing at your jokes, and exuding an aura of friendly charm. This person could very well be an opportunist in disguise. Opportunists are adept at blending into any social setting, not to forge authentic bonds, but to exploit them for personal gain. Similar to a chameleon seamlessly adapting to its environment, opportunists adjust their personas to suit the situation at hand. They might present themselves as the supportive colleague who persuades you to take on additional work, the struggling a friend who continually solicits loans, or the seemingly helpful acquaintance who leverages your connections for their own advancement. What distinguishes an opportunist from someone genuinely in need is their approach to reciprocity. According to psychologist Harriet Breaker, opportunists excel in emotional manipulation. They may induce feelings of guilt or selfishness if you hesitate to fulfill their requests, all while offering little in return. They might shower you with flattery or make vague promises of future favors, yet fail to reciprocate when you require assistance. Consider a scenario like planning a group project. The opportunist eagerly contributes ideas and offers a support during brainstorming sessions but conveniently disappears when it's time for actual implementation. They may enthusiastically join in celebrations of success without acknowledging the substantial efforts of others who laid the groundwork. Navigating interactions with opportunists demands clear boundaries as your first defense. Clearly communicate your resources and limitations up front. Don't hesitate to decline requests that feel one-sided or unequal. Remember, healthy relationships thrive on mutual give and take. Encourage the opportunist to contribute meaningfully, whether through delineated roles and projects or establishing equitable exchanges in friendships. Studies suggest that opportunism often stems from a combination of low empathy and a heightened focus on self-interest. These individuals prioritize their personal needs above all else, often oblivious to the impact their actions have on others. By recognizing these underlying psychological dynamics, you can better discern and manage opportunistic relationships in your life. In relationships, reciprocity serves as a litmus test for authenticity. Avoid becoming an emotional ATM, dispensing support without receiving meaningful returns. If you find yourself continually giving while receiving only empty promises, it's essential to reassess the dynamics at play. Direct your efforts towards connections that value your contributions and reciprocate your gestures of goodwill. Ultimately, the journey towards forming genuine connections is hindered when opportunists exploit trust for personal gain. 
By safeguarding your boundaries and investing in relationships built on mutual respect, you cultivate a supportive network that enriches both parties involved. Don't allow opportunists to overshadow the potential for meaningful connections, waiting to be nurtured and cherished. Now let's go to our eighth and final type of people we should not help, the envious. Imagine you just won the lottery. Who would you tell first? Before you start making a mental list, let me share an interesting fact with you. According to a study conducted by Harvard University, 70% of lottery winners experience a deterioration in their personal relationships after their victory. The main reason is envy. But you don't need to win millions to experience the corrosive effects of envy. From that promotion at work to that new relationship that has you on cloud nine, the envious are always lurking, ready to throw their venomous darts of disapproval and resentment. Psychologist Sarah Protasi, in her book The Philosophy of Envy, as suggests that envy arises when we perceive a gap between what we have and what we believe we deserve. It's as if we have an internal cosmic justice counter that goes crazy when someone else gets something we think should be ours. But here's the interesting part, envy is not necessarily bad. In fact, it can be a powerful motivator. As the famous inventor Thomas Edison once said, "Ah, to invent, you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. Substitute junk for envy, and you have a recipe for success or disaster, depending on how you handle it. The key lies in how we respond to envy, both ours and others. Studies show that lottery winners often face a surprising side effect, a decline in their closest relationships. The culprit? Envy. It's a green-eyed monster that can poison even the strongest bonds. But envy isn't reserved for grand prizes. A promotion, a glowing relationship, even a killer new haircut can spark envy's flames. But here's the surprising twist. Envy isn't always a villain. It can be a potent motivator. Think of Thomas Edison's famous quote, Eh, to invent, you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. Substitute a junk for envy, and you have a recipe for success or disaster, depending on how you handle it. The key lies in managing envy, both our own and others. One counterintuitive but effective tip Keep your goals and successes under wraps for a while. Yes, you read that right. In today's a share everything online a world, this might sound crazy. But here's the science. Sharing your plans too soon triggers a dopamine rush in your brain, mimicking the feeling of achievement. This can lull you into a false sense of accomplishment, sapping your motivation. A study in psychological science found that people who kept their goals private were 70% more likely to achieve them. The universe, it seems, has a quirky sense of humor. The more you blab about your dreams, the less likely they are to materialize. But it's not just your own psychology at play. Sharing your plans exposes them to the envious gaze of others. As writer Gore Vidal quipped, every time a friend succeeds, I die a little. Now imagine that multiplied by every person you tell. Talk about a downpour of negative energy. So, should we become social hermits, guarding our achievements like buried treasure? Not quite. The secret lies in being selective. Entrepreneur Richard Branson puts it perfectly, a trust your instincts. Be selective about who you share your dreams with. Think of your dreams as a secret family recipe. You wouldn't share it with just anyone, would you? Only those you trust implicitly, those who will celebrate and support your journey. And when you do decide to share your news, do it in a way that inspires, not provokes. Instead of a boastful, I just got an amazing promotion, a try, I'm excited about this new challenge at work. The subtle shift in focus makes a world of difference in how your news is received. Now, back to those envious friends. How do you spot them? Here are some red flags. The grudging congratulator, 
their praise sounds more forced than a bad karaoke rendition. The minimizer, no matter how big your win, they'll downplay it as luck or a no big deal. The competitor, your success is their cue to launch into a story about how they did it better, faster, cheaper. The undercover saboteur, they'll publicly cheer you on while subtly trying to trip you up behind the scenes. The information vacuum cleaner, they pepper you with questions, not out of genuine interest, but to find chinks in your armor or copy your strategy. Learning to recognize these patterns is your first line of defense. The second is cultivating what I call an e-oyster mindset. Just like an oyster transforms an irritant into a gleaming pearl, you can transform envy into fuel for your own growth. Remember, your worth isn't diminished by someone else's achievements, nor is it inflated by their failures. As Mark Twain wisely said, a comparison is the thief of joy. Focus on your own path, your own goals, and your own blossoming. Recognizing these patterns is the first step to protecting yourself. The second is developing what I call an oyster mindset. Do you know how oysters produce pearls? By taking an irritant and turning it into something beautiful. In the same way, you can take others' envy and use it as motivation to keep growing and improving. Remember, your value does not diminish because of others' achievements, nor does it increase because of their failures. As writer Mark Twain once said, a comparison is the thief of joy. Focus on your own path, your own goals, and your own growth. Envy is often a reflection of others' insecurity. As Eleanor Roosevelt once said, a no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So the next time you feel the envious gaze of someone, smile, not because you enjoy their discomfort, but because you have found a sign that you are on the right track. In the exhilarating rush of achievement, it's tempting to blast your good news to the world. But hold on a beat. Nestled amongst the well-wishers could lurk a silent saboteur, the envious friend. Studies reveal a surprising downside to winning the lottery, a decline in close relationships, often fueled by envy's green-eyed glare. This emotional monster can poison even the strongest bonds, and its sting isn't reserved for grand prizes. A promotion, a glowing relationship, even a killer new haircut can spark its flames. So why does envy take root in some hearts? Psychologist Sarah Protasi offers an explanation in her book, The Philosophy of Envy. It boils down to a perceived gap between what we have and what we believe we deserve. It's like an internal cosmic scale, tipping violently when someone else snags the prize we believe should be ours. But here's the twist, envy isn't always a villain in disguise. It can be a potent motivator, a spark that ignites our own drive to succeed. Think of Thomas Edison's famous quote, "Air to invent, you need a good imagination and a pile of junk. Substitute a junk for envy, and you have a recipe for success or disaster, depending on how you handle it. The key lies in managing envy, both our own and the kind directed at us. Here's a counterintuitive but effective tip. Keep your goals and successes under wraps for a while. Yes, you read that right. In our Share Everything Online a World, this might sound crazy. But science backs it up. Sharing your plans too soon triggers a dopamine rush in your brain, mimicking the feeling of achievement. This can lull you into a false sense of accomplishment, sapping your motivation. A study in psychological science found that people who kept their goals private were 70% more likely to achieve them. The universe, it seems, has a quirky sense of humor, the more you blab about your dreams, the less likely they are to materialize. But it's not just your own psychology at play. Sharing your plans exposes them to the envious gaze of others. As writer Gore Vidal quipped, every time a friend succeeds, I die a little. Now imagine that multiplied by every person you tell. Talk about a downpour of negative energy. 
So being selective about who you share your successes and plans with isn't about being selfish or arrogant. It's about protecting your energy, maintaining your motivation, and yes, also about protecting yourself from the corrosive sting of envy. As philosopher Bertrand Russell once said, don't worry about what others think of you, they care much less than you imagine. So the next time you have big news or an exciting plan, take a deep breath, smile to yourself, and keep it as a treasure. Share it only with those you know will genuinely be happy for you. Remember, the best success is the one that does not need to be announced. Let your achievements speak for themselves. After all, actions always speak louder than words and definitely attract less envy. If you've made it this far, be sure to leave your mark down here in the comments by writing a peaceful mind. If you found these insights valuable, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe for more wisdom. And before you go, here's something extraordinary we want to share with you. NASA scientists have developed a revolutionary 7-minute audio called a Genius Wave that helps unlock your brain's full potential. Imagine attracting success and happiness effortlessly. To discover how you can transform your life too, then subscribe to our channel to do not miss out on this opportunity.